That is crazy. Nobody, you are so good. I've never, never seen. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Yes, yes. Well, I, I've, I've said it many times, I've told a story. When I was a kid, I got the idea of being an actor. But it was secret. I kept it secret. And I'd take a shower, as it happened in Pittsburgh, um, before school every day. And we had a glass door, and it would steam up, and I would write that. That's what I would write. Please, God, let me be an actor. And then, before anybody would see it, I would wipe it off. And here I am at the Champs-Élysées Film Festival, promoting the mountain. I'm an actor. How about that? Hey, that's a funny, that's a good picture. Errol Garner plays Misty. That was an album. That's a record, a cover of a record album that my dad uh, brought home. We played all the time. And, and that's one of the things that made me want to be a piano player. Um, not as a career, but love piano. And I, I play now, and we released an album on DECA called Jeff Goldblum and the Mildred Snitzer Orchestra, the Capitol Studio Sessions. and. And we're cooking up more things. We're cooking up more things. And we're going to be around these parts playing the Glastonbury uh, Festival uh, soon. And, uh, you know, we're playing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so this isn't the, yeah, I'm looking at a picture of, um, a, uh, this is a theater in Pittsburgh. Yeah. This isn't the, the uh, we, we, uh, we used to go to a, a uh, a, a theater called the Leona Theater, which they now tore down, which is a big, not modern, but old style yeah. jewel box of a theater. And and King Kong versus Godzilla is where I saw is one of the first movies I saw and I can remember seeing there. Got me very excited. And Jason and the Argonauts. I love we saw, I saw it with my sister at the Leona Theater and I loved that movie. I have loved movies all the time, you know, and here I am in the mountain at the Champs-Élysées Film Festival. My teacher, um, yes, I was introduced to his work in high school summer sessions in Pittsburgh because somebody who taught, who had worked with him and taught there was teaching in Pittsburgh. And then I went right after high school when I was 17 and studied with that man, Sanford Meisner, a famous acting teacher who was in the group theater uh, along with Stella Adler and uh, Lee Strasberg. Um, and Harold Clerman, uh, and uh, brilliant acting teacher, and uh, yes, yeah, Sanford Meisner. So that's a poster of the mountain. Well, I like this movie. Um, uh, I love it a lot. Rick Alverson is a brilliant director, and he directed the movie. It's a movie that's um, quite artful, and poetical, and haunting and um, awakening and disturbing. And I play a lobotomist in it in 1954 in America. And it's about America in a way, um, in a poetical way, how misguidedly, like Arthur Miller talks about in Death of a Salesman, or uh, Kurt Anderson does in his current book, Fantasyland, or How America Went Haywire, talks about, this movie does, how America can chase after a mythological story myth of utopia uh, misguidedly to the detriment sometimes of the human organism and uh, and through athletics and kitsch pageantry in the ice skating world or through snake oil uh, you know medical fixes uh, and uh, and narcissism and self-glorification and then finally through religious cult uh, um, you know, uh, uh, groups. Uh, we see in this movie a poetical landscape and meditation on the mountain. Rick Alverson, brilliant director. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I have not seen Live at the Cow Palace. Hey, I didn't know that they formally uh, uh, collaborated, but I saw, I thought I was going to go see in 1970, I'll bet it was 75, because um, when, when is this, huh? The, the, in Los Angeles, I was at, uh, on the Sunset Strip, and uh, I, I wanted to see Gil Scott Heron, and saw uh, the show, and Stevie Wonder was in the audience, whom I've always adored, worshipped, and, uh, and he got up with him at the end, and sat in, and played the drums, and I never knew that they were formally on a bill together like that. That's amazing. Jeez, thanks for showing me that. 
Fritzy Zivic, you are so funny. Yes, I've given, in some interviews, I've talked about Fritzy Zivic, uh, a, a fighter from Pittsburgh, who my dad pointed out and said, look, you know who that is, that guy with the cauliflower ear? That's Fritzy Zivic, he was a fighter. And he was going, as we were going, in to see the Steelers in the 60s. And I'll bet this is the Steelers, a Steelers game from the 60s, maybe in Forbes Field or Pitt Stadium. I think this, this could have been Forbes Field transformed right there into, we were there, we were there. And I'm still a kind of a wild Steelers fan now. That is crazy. Nobody, you are so good. I've never, never seen. <laughs> now you must have made this up because there's no real formal picture of this. Anyway, Bell of the Balkans was the first time when I was in camp, summer camp, at Chatham Music Day Camp in Pittsburgh between fifth and sixth and sixth and seventh grades. I took a drama class and was the lead in Bell of the Balkans at the end of the end of the thing and had a great time and my dad and pa my parents were there and they said how'd you like that and I was like that was good because my dad had already said you know if you find something you love to do maybe that's how you choose your voc vocation yeah. and that's, uh, that's where I got the idea Thanks a lot. thank you what a fantastic fantastic thing thank you